Hi, and welcome everyone, uh, everyone to IDC Directions 2021. It's a great pleasure to be here. My name is Tom Zink, and I'm leading IDC's European Financial Services Research. And many of you will have seen me speaking in uh, some of our previous events. Today, I want to talk a bit uh, uh, some, about something a bit different. And uh, by doing so, introducing IDC's new digital resiliency framework, and kind of applying that to financial services and particularly the insurance and the banking sectors uh, for a matter of fact. And I think the message we really want to go into is that digital resiliency is not just a nice thing to have, but it is really a fundamental prerequisite to really prepare for the unknown. And for that fact, uh, we really need to start thinking about how we can build digital resiliency into everything we do. Um, I also want to put out a, a warm welcome and thanks to our sponsor, Red Hat, for this session. And uh, before, uh, oh, let me jump right into the content uh, for the next uh, 20 minutes. So you have probably have seen many of these, these cyclical curves uh, over the last year. I mean, it's not a new theme uh, eternally, and it also is not really important where we are at the moment. And I think we are at the moment in this interesting in-between when, when we look at COVID, when we are not sure, uh, do we have the worst behind this? Are we just uh, bracing for the next wave? And this is really fitting quite nicely with the theme or with the, with the continuous volatility that we are expecting. And this is not just COVID, this is any crisis. And for those of you uh, that have been in the, in the industry for a long time, we are continuously experiencing these, these external shocks. Sometimes it's also homemade shocks. But the, the nature of business is that we have the cyclical movements. But still, uh, we often respond in the very same fashion. And that's not anti-cyclical, but it's absolutely cyclical. And that's what I wanted to show here. And for those of you who have listened to us before, these are the five stages that most organizations go through when we hit a crisis. And as you can see, the first two, the focus is really on tactical responses and then focusing on cost optimization. And very often the measures taken in these two steps uh, on these two um, levels are compounding, they are aggregating, they are making the crisis worse. And what we really should start thinking about, how can we build up this business resiliency up front so that we do not fall into the same cyclical movements every time the going gets rough and really build out that resiliency and continue uh, with targeted investments to really future-proof our enterprise. And that's why we think that a digital resiliency framework will help organizations and particularly financial service organizations to prepare uh, for the unknown and then react more in a strategic and a more informed manner to respond to the many challenges that are coming up. And I think there is definitely no shortage of these, these critical issues coming up. So uh, before I jump into the framework, I wanted to give a short overview of what I think really worked well in the last 24 months. And uh, I think financial services, compared with many of the other industries, has found, fared relatively well throughout the crisis. But obviously, we have realized that the world is even more interconnected than, it, than we thought. And uh, the continuous pressures that do um, kind of affect these, this interconnected world, whether it's the ship shortages, whether it's the, the COVID restrictions, whether it's generally... Uh, political pressure and uh, all those things make uh, it even more difficult for, for financial institutions to move forward. But what we've also seen is that preparation really does pay off. And the FSI industry was an industry that was relatively well prepared, not for a pandemic, but generally the business continuity plans had been in place. And this really allowed them to very quickly shift into crisis mode. And that really set them up in a much better uh, way than, than some of the other industries. We also learned throughout the crisis, and we've done countless surveys that has proven that 
um, or indicator that is that digital leaders with advanced digital processes and digital sales capabilities have proven a lot more resilient to the last uh, the COVID crisis than many of the non not so well prepared organizations. However, we also see at the same time that Europe is falling further and further behind their global peers and profitability is becoming a real issue for European financial institutions. We also saw the rise of remote working. I think traditionally the industry was never conceptualized for it. And I was still impressed how seamlessly that, that shift of sending thousands of staff home worked when the, when the first wave hit. But now we see a lot of banking leaders really backpedaling because they are not as satisfied with the benefits of remote working. And many are now pushing for, to get their staff back into the offices. So it is a lot more to it than just sending people home. It requires a lot of cultural change. It requires better digital tools. It uh, um, requires much better performance management and, and KPIs to really get people to, to um, work effectively in this, uh, in this um, um, remote world. And this is really the, the key success also of hybrid models that we expect to continue as we move, uh, as we come out of the crisis. We also realized how important the cloud is going. We've really seen a, a surge in cloud deployments over the last 18 months. And this has really given FSI a lot of flexibility, a lot more reliability and the speed to adapt, even if most or a lot of their staff is limited because they are working from home. On the other hand, we obviously see a new slew of regulations, which may, do not necessarily make things more difficult, but it is going to be costly to implement that. And I'm just thinking about DORA, which is upcoming, but then also some uh, European initiatives such as GAIA-X um, that are really aiming to um, standardize IT risk management and also increase the independence from some of the global tech firms. Um, I think one area where I hear a lot of talk, but not a lot of work yet, is around credit quality. And frankly, the situation hasn't been as dire as many of us expected, most and foremost me, but we see how we still lack uh, uh, reliable data to really make smart credit decisions. And I, I think it's particularly true in the current environment when solvency rules are still suspended in some um, areas where data reporting is not as it should be. And banks make credit decisions based on incomplete information. And what we really need to move beyond here is this, this um, or what we need to move to is uh, more diverse data, more predictive capabilities to really um, yeah, better prepare for the changes in uh, caused by external effects. So let me zoom in on digital resiliency. And let me start with a very simple definition. So digital resiliency really means the ability for an organization to rapidly adapt to business disruptions by leveraging, leveraging digital capabilities to not only restore business operations, but also to capitalize on the changed conditions. And the reality of resiliency was that in the past, we looked at two different types of resiliency. There was business resiliency. We tried to build our revenue models where we tried to uh, drive our sales and then kind of keep um, our operations going. The other one is IT resiliency. And here we saw a lot more investment, obviously. But what is really missing is bringing those two resiliency initiatives together. That's exactly what digital resiliency means is bringing all those different and fragmented and siloed initiatives together into a holistic framework. But it's a little bit more than that. And you may have seen this before. So uh, the resiliency really touches upon the entire organization. It's a bit like when we started off with digital, uh, talking about digital transformation. First, it was very tactical, very narrow um, initiatives. Then we realized in order to make it work, you really need it holistically. And that's what this digital resiliency framework is trying to establish. So digital resiliency affects six different dimensions. And so far, most organizations have not really looked at these six dimensions in detail, but maybe done a bit of piecemeal work here and there. But all those six uh, dimensions really have to function in a concerted effort to really make digital resiliency work. And that also means 
looking, uh, bringing in different stages. I, I showed you this, this this crisis wave before and different capabilities throughout those um, different crisis stages to really enable organizations to respond and restore when crisis hits. But then at the same time, and not just with a time delay, expand and optimize operations. And also while we are at it, not really drop the ball on acceleration and innovation. So all of that has to um, happen concurrently and not uh, uh, simultaneously and not concurrently anymore. So let me look or take you through some of the insights that we've found from, from some of the surveys that we've done. And I'll take you through all of those six dimensions. And here I wanted to focus on operations and customer e and ecosystems. So operations clearly has received a lot of attention over the last um, couple of months. And I already mentioned how important cloud has become as a, as, an, as a vehicle to really drive innovation and give organizations that flexibility and agility. 22% of FSI now plan to commit to a single pla uh, cloud platform, while 38% uh, aim to spread, re spread resources across several cloud offerings. So uh, I think a lot of organizations still have this intrinsic fear of being locked in by on, on a platform and uh, try to really hedge and, and also uh, with an eye on resiliency, obviously uh, uh, hedge their bets on if a platform, what happens if a platform goes down or whatever their issues with a particular platform. However, only 5% um, at the moment say they are aggressively leverage open source to prevent platform lock-in. So with open source, we really mean build using a shared open source um, framework to operate across different cloud platforms. Uh, another key challenge that was identified around operations is the lack of real time and actual performance data. And that's really is seen as a, as a key obstacle to get more value out of automation initiatives by, 30, by, by a quarter of the, the respondents. Another quarter identified the lack of a consistent end-to-end -end process and enterprise-wide control and visibility tools in uh, operations. So uh, a lot of potential for improvement and getting more value out of data. On the customer and ecosystems resiliency, um, this we, we really hear from our customer from our from our banking customers that 23% um, uh, are now improving customer uh, seeing customer experience improvements as one of the top three priorities, only trumped by performance innovation. Uh, we also see that the understanding of, of the benefits of the ecosystem is now getting more tangible. I think in the past, we've talked a lot about open banking and open finance, but it was uh, not really a strategic priority for a lot of organizations, and this is changing now. I think the, 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 this, this, this collapse of the, of the entire ecosystem in the early onslaught of the pandemic is, is now really, and, and then its resiliency as kind of uh, allowing organizations to innovate at scale by partnering with organizations of the ecosystem has really demonstrated that quite impressively. So 33% of FSI look at ecosystems to share operational capabilities and expertise and in, um, another quarter is also looking at them as a platform to enable data and information sharing. So key use cases around ecosystems uh, clearly identified here. Um, let me move on to the next uh, two dimensions. And brand of reputation are essentially uh, important um, criteria for, to, for success in a crisis environment. We really saw that many of the digital challenges really struggled in the early onslaught of the pandemic simply because their reputation and their brand was not as strong. And we saw this flight for quality um, or sometimes also flight in, in terms of size uh, when, organ when, when customers were moving deposits from challenges towards traditional organizations. Um, so, uh, and this one, I, I focused a bit more on what insurers uh, are saying. So 24% of insurers are saying that marketing and brand awareness are about their top three business priorities for, tw uh, for 2021. And 81 of them report that uh, digital investments directly impact their security and brand trust. So really essential um, stats here. 
on the workforce, I already touched a bit on that. So we really see how organizations have transformed their workforce. Obviously, hybrid working is the new reality. And uh, 48 insurer, uh, percent of insurers now see how um, this is uh, one of the key um, drivers of, of work, uh, uh, work transformation. Uh, so particularly compliance, growth, and uh, customer experience are, are, are critical drivers here. We also saw that it is very easy to fall back into the old ways. So we, we did a survey in March 2021. And at that time, 60% of insurers in Europe are saying that uh, their, their staff was working from home. But then when we asked them how they would expect this number to look like in 2022, this percentage dropped to almost 0%. So really see how an industry is set in its, in its ways, um, bringing people back to the office, uh, despite all the, the progress that was made uh, in, around digital working, remote working over the last couple of, of years, a uh, uh, couple of months. And this is really essential um, to, to see that we are stuck in our old ways. And I think digital resiliency means not also to fall back into old behaviors when you um, when, when the organization situation is changing. Lastly, I wanted to talk about leadership and financial performance. And I think these are two really critical ones because they really hold the entire piece together. Um, and when we ask banking leaders about what are the top three challenges when it comes to leadership, uh, I was really surprised when 17 of them were saying, that senior management really lacks a strategic vision and 24% felt that leaders do not really support customer experience enough. We also um, found that only 23% of banking leaders are proactively driving process transformation, while 37% deal with them with any process inefficiencies once they are identified or when they become too big to ignore but what really shocked me was that 40% more or less didn't really bother about it. So operational process transformation is an, uh, is an issue that's not really considered much on a, on a C-level level, but uh, very often those initiatives are housed much further down. The other um, component obviously is around financial management. I think I already talked to that point when I talked about the workforce. So many of the bank CEOs that were very vocal about the, the benefits or the disadvantages of remote working uh, identified performance issues as one of the, the key disadvantages of re uh, remote working. And that also really leads to the fact that 62% of banks uh, now see performance as the most important business prior priority um, in 2021, and that almost doubled from, from 2019. So when we look at banks, we still see organizations that navigate on very old data. Um, so only 19% of agile banks have now switched to really continuously adjusting budgets based on new data but still most of this data is largely periodical. So quarterly, if it's good, uh, usually even longer timeframes and only really a handful of organizations uh, do these adjustments of budgeting on the go. So we really need to, to uh, change the way we um, steer our organizations based on data uh, to really get better insights. And we need to make many of the data points that are collected to transform them in something that's more actionable to, to really give back value to the organization. That already brings me to the end of my session. Uh, just a couple of thoughts and, and my, uh, our recommendations. So uh, COVID-19 has really taught us that digitally advanced FSI are more resilient than those that are not. And this really has accelerated the, the digital transformation pressure on a lot of organizations. What's clear is the future will continue to be volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. And most importantly, it will be increasingly digital. To really operate in this new uh, economy, we need to rethink resiliency in a holistic manner. And that means combining and aligning business and IT resiliency. Uh, we talked about the cloud. 
I think cloud will re, uh, continue to um, be a most essential component of an FSI's resiliency strategy. It is important to really avoid some of the errors of the past around concentration risk and vendor lock-in. And I think a lot of organizations are trying to deal with that, yet not enough of them are really considering open source as an essential capability to give them that flexibility and performance across a multitude of different operating environments. And I think this is really an area where Red Hat can, can deliver a lot of value um, through their platforms and, and really help organizations to, to, to really navigate and orchestrate across different, uh, different operating environments. And lastly, uh, too many organizations are operating based on tactical plans rather than a fact-based transformational strategy. Decision makers too often lack a clear vision, but more essentially, they are acting on outdated and ineffective data. So what we really need to get to is a more actionable real-time data um, that will be the, the key to build a genuine agile organization. With that, many thanks for your attention and over to our uh, partners from Red Hat. Thank you very much.